Hi, welcome to Nuclear Chemistry. My name is Dr. English. Today we're going to be talking about radioactive decay. Specifically, we're going to look at understanding radioactive decay, alpha decay, beta decay, positron emission, and finally, do some practice decay problems as we go through the tutorial. What is radioactive decay? Radioactive decay is when an unstable nucleus spontaneously decays and forms products that are more stable. So remember, we talked about stability with nuclei, and stability means that our proton to neutron ratio will be closer to one to one. When an unstable nucleus decays, it has the potential to emit, which is just a fancy word for release, radiation in the form of alpha particles, beta particles, positrons, and gamma radiation. Let's first talk about alpha decay. As a nucleus emits an alpha particle, its atomic number is going to decrease by two. In other words, two protons that were originally in our parent nucleus are now part of this released alpha particle. The mass number is also going to decrease by a total of four. Two protons and two neutrons of the alpha particle. So again, here's my parent nucleus. When my parent nucleus undergoes alpha decay, an alpha particle is released, and ultimately this daughter nucleus is going to lack two protons and two neutrons because those particles are found in this released alpha particle. Here's an example. We have Ra226. It's undergoing alpha decay, and I know it's undergoing alpha decay because I see my alpha particle being released. I also have Rn222, which is more stable than Ra226. And Rn222, while it's not a perfect one-to-one -one ratio of protons to neutrons by any stretch, it's closer than it was before in the original Ra226. Note how both the atomic and the mass numbers add up on each side of the arrow. What do we mean by this? The total mass that we start with is 226. If I take the four from the alpha particle and the 222 from the Rn and I add those together, I get 226. The atomic number at the beginning for Ra is 88. If I add together the two here and the 86 here, add those two together, I get 88. So we have a conservation as we undergo this nuclear decay. What I start with is still accounted for in what I end with. Now you try. What is X? We're given your parent particle. We know that it's undergoing alpha decay. I'd like you to stop and try to figure out what X is. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. We know that the atomic number in the beginning for gold 198 is 79. So that means the number on the bottom over here, when I add these numbers together, have to add up to 79. So I know that 77 plus 2 will give me 79. The mass number for gold over here is 198. So ultimately, the alpha particle plus the mass number of the x also has to equal 198. So 198 take away 4, I'll get 194. So the x that is being represented here will be IR, a mass number of 194, and an atomic number of 77. Now let's talk about beta decay. When a nucleus emits a beta particle, which will have a charge of negative one, the charge on the nucleus increases by one. This means that the atomic number increases by one. So here's my neutron. When a beta particle is emitted, and here's my beta particle right here, the neutron is going to transform into a proton, and we know that protons are positive. They have a positive charge associated with them. Notice here that the mass number doesn't change because, frankly, electrons are extremely light. The neutron is originally neutral, so if it undergoes beta decay, it's going to release a negative particle, making this new particle positive. Let's look at an example, a nuclear equation for beta decay. I start out with iodine-131. It's going to undergo beta decay. As a result, my mass number does not change. I start with 131, I end with 131, because 131 plus 0 will still give me 131. 
The tricky thing here is determining your atomic number. I know I originally start out with an atomic number of 53, which tells me that this is iodine. I need a number minus 1 that ultimately will give me 53. So 54 minus 1 gives me 53. The element that has an atomic number of 53 is Xe. Now it's your turn. What is X? I have carbon 14 undergoing beta decay. There's my beta particle right there. Take a moment, figure it out, check your work. Welcome back. Let's see how you did. I know that when this undergoes beta decay, my mass number is not going to change. So this X will have a mass number of 14 because 14 plus 0 will give me 14. Again, the tricky thing here is knowing that ultimately my number on the bottom has to equal 6. So what number minus 1 will equal 6? That would be 7. So the symbol here would be 14, 7, and we know that the element that has an atomic number of 7 is nitrogen. Let's talk about positron emission. The production of a positron during the conversion of a proton to a neutron. When a nucleus emits a positron with a charge of plus 1, the charge on the nucleus is going to decrease by 1. So here I have a proton becoming a neutron and a positron is emitted. Here's an example. The positron emission of potassium 37 to argon 37 is represented by the following equation. So I start out with potassium 37. I'm going to go to argon 37. Again, notice the mass numbers don't change, but my atomic number has gone down by 1 because 18 plus 1 is 19. Now it's your turn. Read over the problem, solve for x. Welcome back, let's see how you did. So we're starting out with cesium-134. I know that my mass number on my x will also be 134 because, again, 134 plus 0 gives me 134. My atomic number for cesium is 55, so I need a number that is going to add up to 55. So 55 take away 1 gives me 54. The element that has an atomic number of 54 is Xe. So in the end, I'm going to write 134, 54 with the symbol of Xe. So what did you learn? We answered the question, what is radioactive decay? We talked about alpha decay, beta decay, positron emission, and then we did some practice decay problems. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.